Welcome to Small Girl Big Talk, where we talk about the important stuff in adulthood, like money, health, your relationship with yourself or your loved ones, self-identity, and so many other important things that we care about. I'm your host, Wendy, and my hope for this podcast is really for it to bring comfort and hopefully help you feel a little bit less alone in your adulthood journey. Now, today's episode came up to me quite randomly today as I was going through my usual Sunday routine of doing my weekly review where I look into my weekly schedule, my cleaning schedule, my expenses, my grocery list, and all the other important stuff for myself. And so I have this habit of tracking all sorts of numbers in my life. And I also know that this is not a very normal practice for most people because I I observe through the people that are close to me, whether it's Kevin, my fiance, or my close friends or my family members, I know I track a lot more things than a normal person. So the reason why I've been doing this, it's because over the last few years of learning about businesses as well, one thing that I learned is you are what you measure. There is also this very famous business quote that says that if you cannot measure it, you cannot improve it. So I know these are business references where it's talking about operations of a business to be improved or certain areas of business. But I also learned that this is also applicable to your own life as well. So besides the metrics that I've been tracking in my full-time job, you know, the KPI that I have, I also track numbers from multiple areas in my life. And I thought it would be quite interesting to share this numbers with you to help you get inspired to see how you can measure or track the numbers in your life to help you to improve your life as well. Now, I am planning to prepare a document listing down all the items that I mentioned today in case any of you wants to use it as a reference for your own self-improvement journey. I am going to prepare that document and include it in the show note so you can just listen to it as you are driving or as you are walking. Don't worry about it. I have the notes for you. I've got you covered, okay? Now, the first thing that I've been tracking is what most people would have been tracking as well, which is the money part of things. Of course, the first thing would be income because without money coming in, we literally are not able to live because we wouldn't be able to eat or have no place to sleep and all the other important things. So income is an important thing that I am tracking. The second thing that I track is expenses. Now, I used to be someone who didn't track too detailed in terms of how much that I spend. I just have a general idea of how much I allocated to food and groceries or how much did I spend on shopping and clothes this month, for example. But ever since I got into credit card debt and because I have a goal to clear off this debt in a timely manner, I started to take my financials more seriously. By the end of last year, I downloaded an app and I actually track every single line item on my expenses for, so it's been like almost half year now and it has been really helpful to just help me be aware of where my money is going. So for example, I actually didn't know that I've been spending a lot on gifts which is a category that was never in my budget previously. But now, ever since I started tracking the amount of money that I've been spending on other people, I realized that, oh, I think I need to create a budget for this area. So then I can maybe create a sinking fund on it. So speaking of sinking fund, I also track my savings as well. I create what we call sinking fund, which are like tiny saving items like sinking fund for birthdays, sinking fund for Christmas, sinking fund for a car or a car insurance. So I created small savings buckets like that to help me to be better at savings and to prepare for the expenses that I have as well. And lastly, of course, I also have to track the amount of debt that I have. I am very lucky that I didn't have any student loans or house loans or car loans at the moment. I'm very lucky in that sense. But I did invest in some self-improvement program, some coaching program before this, and that has accumulated me some credit card debt. So I know that it is not healthy, but I am not being too 
stressed or obsessed about it. I just wanted to pay it off in a healthy manner. Like I don't want to be too obsessed with paying off the debt. So I really wanted to take this at my own pace. So I am paying it off bit by bit and I'm not too stressed up about it because I also believe that I'm able to make more and more money to cover up for this debt eventually. So I feel like one area that I've not been paying enough attention on is the income area. So I've been able to track my expenses, my savings and debt very well and I feel like it's quite properly managed right now. But the income area, I feel like I am still not focused on it enough to help myself diversify my income streams whether it's through investments or side hustles of stuff like that. So that is an area that I am trying to focus more in this season. Now, money aside, another thing that I do track pretty well is the numbers for my physical health as well, or what we call fitness. So the number one thing that I've been tracking for the last year, or ever since I started using Mi Band, which is kind of like a fitness band, is my number of sleeping hours. So I realized that I am at the age where sleep is important for me. I'm no longer able to function optimally if I were to sleep late and wake up early. I'm no longer that girl in university who can go party at night and still wake up and show up in class and still get aches for exam. Like I'm just no longer there anymore. So I realized that my sleep quality is very important. So having this sleeping band that I do wear to sleep every day, even though at first I find that it's uncomfortable, you just get used to it. It helps me to keep track of the number of hours that I've been sleeping and also the number of deep sleep that I'm getting as well. It helps me to understand if I'm getting enough rest so that my body is at its peak, like it can function very optimally. So I started tracking that and I find that being able to be obsessed with the number of sleep has helped me to function better generally as a person. Now, the second thing that I also track under my physical health is the number of times that I get active. So right now, I just track by the number of times that I work out or at least do some stretches like yoga or if I really don't feel like working out at all, I would try to at least aim to lock in more steps that I'm taking each day. So again, this was able to be tracked through the Mi Band that I have. So a Mi Band is a very, very cheap, like affordable option for a sports band. You don't need to get an Apple Watch or a Garmin or a Fitbit to do it. Find a cheap one for you to get started first. And if you find that it is helpful for you, then you can upgrade. You don't need to have really fancy technology. So I am at the stage where I find that I'm using these bands a lot. And if one day I can afford it, I would love to have an Apple Watch because apparently the tracker is more accurate. But at this point, the Mi Band is doing enough to help me keeping track of everything. So that's all good. Now, next up, I have also been doing intermittent fasting in the last two months. It started off because I had a beach retreat to attend and wanted to look slightly better uh, physically when I'm in my bikini. But that's when I also realized that intermittent fasting is also really convenient. And it is by far the most efficient way for me to look less bloated physically and I quite like that so I've been continuing this practice to intermittent fast at least three to four times a week and the fast that I'm doing is the 16-8 fast so that means that I don't eat for 16 hours I can drink plain water I can drink coffee or tea Basically things that has no sugar or extra calories on it, it's okay. But I can only eat in an 8-hour window. So my current window is at 12.30 to 8.30. Generally, I try to stick to that. But again, like I'm not too strict on myself for it. So I try to intermittent fast like 3 to 4 days throughout the weekdays. But I do allow myself to eat and enjoy my breakfast over the weekend or on days where I'm just physically unwell or maybe it's before my period and I just feel like feeding my stomach more, feeding my body more, then I don't intermittent fast. But generally, I have been tracking the numbers or at least the time when I'm eating as well. And speaking of eating, of course, um, I do 
kind of have a brief idea on the calories intake that I have or the macros intake that I have. Now, I am at a stage where I'm not really obsessed with my physique. Like I'm not trying to lose weight for a certain function or a certain competition. So I'm not tracking my macros to the dot. I'm not tracking how much protein that I'm taking per day, etc. But when I am in that phase, I would also use an app called My Fitness Pal. It helps me to kind of get an idea of the macros or the calories that I'm taking each day. But because I have that habit of doing that before, and even though I'm not tracking it actively right now at this stage when I'm just comfortable physically, I do kind of keep track at the back of my head. Like, like if I had nasi lemak for breakfast, for example, I kind of have a brief idea in my head that I had a lot of carbs and a lot of calories in the morning. Then I would be more mindful in planning my lunch plans or dinner to kind of compensate for the amount that I had in the morning. So even though I'm not actively tracking, I'm kind of still tracking, if that makes sense, okay? As a woman, I am also tracking my menstrual cycle as well. I always have an idea of when my period is coming, when I am ovulating, when is my premenstrual time coming up because I've also learned about the technique cycle syncing which is when you actually plan your workload or your workout activities based on your menstrual cycle. I find that at times during my ovulation I am just more productive, I have more energy so I can do more things so I plan my schedule according to my menstrual cycle as well. If any of you are interested in this technique or this method, you can Google about cycle syncing or menstrual syncing. Just check it out. You should be able to find out more information about it. Besides physical health, everyone around me also know that I care a lot about my mental and spiritual health as well. So I also keep track of how often do I meditate. So at this point of this podcast, I have been meditating every morning for over a year now and when I say every morning of course there will be days that I skip because I'm in a vacation or I'm not feeling well or I'm just on a rush because sometimes life gets busy but generally I've been able to build the habit to meditate for about 10 minutes every day and because my meditation app has a calendar that shows me when I meditate so I kind of keep track of how often I meditate as well as a Christian, I also keep tab on how often do I pray and I have to be pretty honest, it's not as often as I'd like to. Or how often do I go to the church? So that is also something that I keep tab off. And recently, something that I've been trying to be more mindful is also to observe how frequently do I actually take breaks. Breaks where I do fun or creative things, not for the sake of my financial growth or my productivity, but purely for fun, like doing things like writing, painting, drawing, coloring, singing or reading. I've been more mindful of the time that I'm spending doing all these things for the sake of my mental health as well. One thing that I learned when I went for therapies or counseling back when I had depression is that there is this triangle when it comes to your health. On one end, you have your physical health and on the other hand, you have your mental slash spiritual health. And on the third angle, you have your social health as well. So I also focus quite a lot on my social health because from what I learned is when one area is not doing so well, doing well in the other two areas would kind of help lift up your entire wellness in your life. I'm not sure if I'm making sense without having a visual reference, but I hope you understand the idea is physical, mental, and social health, they're kind of all interdependent. And at least two out of the three items are taken care of. Generally, your health or your wellness is pretty well taken care of. I hope that makes sense. So in order to improve my social health, or at least this is something that I'm trying to be more conscious of, I have been tracking 
how often am I seeing my family? And because I don't live close to them, at least how often do I text or call them or chat with them? You know, how often do I spend quality time with Kevin? Are we having date nights? Are we at least having a simple meal and spending time and talking about our days to each other? Because as we live together, sometimes it's very easy to just get too comfortable and not put in effort for the relationship. So I'm always very mindful about the frequency of the quality time we spend together as well. I am also keeping track of how often am I reaching out to the friends that I care about, which I know I'm not too good at this because I kind of have too many friends and I am kind of too busy, but I try my best to keep in touch with the people that I care about. And in doing that, it also means that I'm tracking down friends' birthdays or the important dates that we have so that we can spend more time together so that people know that I care about them and I'm thinking about them. Now, because I am trying to grow this podcast and my dream is to be a full-time content creator, I am taking social media and podcasts really important as well. So if I want to turn this into a source of income, if I want to turn this into my livelihood, I really need to be kind of be strategic with this as well. So I am keeping track of the important metrics like the number of listeners that I have, the number of views or listens, the number of likes, comments, saves and shares so that I can understand the performance of my content and see how can I grow it. Besides that, I'm also keeping track of my posting frequency because social media is a long-term game. The algorithm favors accounts that are more active. So this is also a good time for me to announce that I am planning to post once a week for this podcast. I'm currently setting the posting day to be Thursdays. So you can always look forward to a new episode on Thursdays. For my Instagram and TikTok, I am wanting to post for at least three times a week, whether it's a short form video or a carousel post. They're all fine. I'm trying to post on my Instagram stories as frequently as possible to stay relevant, to stay personally in touch with my audience. I am currently slowly getting back to YouTube by posting this video podcast. But eventually, the plan is also to get back into creating proper, serious, long-form videos as well. I'm not saying that this podcast is not serious, but what I mean is like, you know, content that actually put in more um, effort in terms of planning the visuals as well, because I really do enjoy doing it. It's just that it takes a lot more time than I have right now. So the eventual plan that I have for my social media or, and for my podcast is to eventually create a community for those of you who wants to be a part of this movement that I have. You know, I am really advocating kind of like a soft living, a soft hustling life because I understand that we all have a dream that we want to fight for and we need to work to get there. But I also truly believe that we can do it at our own pace, that we can still live a life, we can still appreciate life and enjoy life as we work hard for that goal that we have as well. So stay tuned to that community coming up. I really still am trying to figure out a system to put this all together because I do still have a full-time job. So I need some time to figure out everything. And yeah, like, Taking this social media and podcasting seriously is a lot of work. I also need to plan when I'm shooting my content based on my schedule. And I also need to be mindful of my monetization plan as well. So eventually, what are the revenue sources that I have? And also, I'm keeping track of the money that I've been investing into. Not just a hobby, but really a next upcoming income stream for myself. Yes. So I've been keeping track of my health, my money, and right now my kind of think of it as a side hustle. And then I still have a home to take care of. So on my weekly review, I actually keep track quite a few things that helps me to build a system for taking care of this home that I have with Kevin. So I do kind of go through like a grocery planning every single week where I keep tap of the things that we have in our pantry and if I need to get groceries for the week or if I don't, 
Generally, I am at a stage where I prefer to have home cooked meals as much as possible because I like to have really balanced meal with protein, carbs, and my vegetable intake. I just find that in Malaysia, it's very hard to eat healthy if you're eating out. There's just a lot of carbs and there's just a lot of, I don't know, processed food. And so I try to cook as much as I can, which means that I need to plan my groceries. And um, next thing, I also have a Notion board purely on my cleaning schedule. This is something that I randomly found on the Notion Reddit group. And ever since that I tried using the template, I, I, I cannot imagine my life without it anymore. So I actually have a cleaning schedule that reminds me when do I need to wash my bed sheets? When do I need to wash my bathrooms, mop the floor, change new toothbrushes? You know, things like that, they are important things to take note of. But we are so busy in our day-to-day -day life. It's very hard for you to keep tap of everything like that. So I'm very glad that I found a system, like an actual organizing tool that helps me to keep track of all this without me having to actively thinking about it. So I do have that. Next thing, because I'm also a plant mama, like I have some more than 10 plants in my house, I think. So I also need to keep tab of when to water my plant, when to fertilize them, if I need to prune it, propagate it, repot it, you name it, right? And of course, as the home, I also need to keep track of when I'm paying bills. <laughs> Adulting sucks, guys. It's so much work. And also, as I'm putting together this list of numbers that I'm tracking, I realized that in recent months, I've also been tracking this a lot more, which is my skincare routine. So I think about two months ago, I realized that I'm getting more and more wrinkles around my eye area because I'm someone who smiles quite intensely <laughs> and I got pretty obsessed with skincare. I'm just really careful about my anti-aging, about how much I'm hydrating myself, am I exfoliating? So I've been taking note of how often am I using my sheet mask, whether I used retinol how many times a week or did I apply clay mask or exfoliate this week? Like I've been keeping tap of that as well. And I'm also trying to build a habit of cleaning my makeup brushes more often to protect my skin hygiene. So I need to keep tap of when I'm washing my makeup brush as well. I also need to keep tap of like the expiry date of my skincare products, stuff like that. You know, things that I do to make sure that I look pretty and presentable and including my fashion as well, like whether... I've worn this clothes to this event pretty often or when was the last time I wear this clothes? Like there's just a lot of work. So now you know, it actually takes quite a lot of effort to just make sure that you look good and presentable. And I'm not doing this for anybody. I'm doing it for myself. So I'm very happily tracking all these things as well. So there you go. Those are the areas in my life that I'm keeping track of certain numbers my financials, my physical health, my spiritual and mental health, my social health, um, my social media and podcasting, you know, performance, home, beauty and fashion. And I feel like ever since that I practiced tracking these numbers in my life, I feel a lot more fulfilled. So the last three years, I've been trying really hard to gain success in life. And at that point, my definition of success is financial. So that's everything that I was focusing on. I was focused on the performance of my work, the income that I'm having, how much revenue am I doing from my coaching program. Every single content that I put out, I was measuring the performance and seeing if it translates to financials. And I wasn't happy at all. I mean, of course, it keeps me going. It keeps me excited. But I felt like I wasn't truly living my life when I was doing all of this. And as I was going through the photos in my album this morning, it made me realize how happy I am to be spending time not just in all this work-related numbers, but also to be spending time with my friends, to be going to the gym, to be launching this podcast and sharing and promoting about it, to be going out on simple date nights with Kevin, or even to be able to just have dinner with Kevin at home. 
I am really happy at this moment and I'm very glad that because I started tracking these numbers. Of course, financially, I'm still far from the success and the freedom that I am going for, but I am happy that I'm at least living a good life as I'm jogging towards these goals that I'm setting for myself. Because I know that I'm not sprinting for the sake of a short-term excitement, but I'm running a marathon to experience a good quality and happy life. So that's what I observed in my own life. And I want to tell you, if you are dedicated to improving your own life, it's really time to measure these numbers because take note of this, whatever you measure grows. Okay. I'm going to repeat that. Whatever you measure grows. So if you want to improve your life, if you want to live a happier life, let's measure your life or at least keep track of the numbers on these areas of your life as well. As I mentioned at the start of this podcast, I will put together a document in the show notes so that if any of you want to take reference, you can refer to the numbers that I'm tracking in my life. But I do want to emphasize that we all have different lives. We all have different values and different priorities in our lives. So I'm in no way saying that how I live is how everyone should live. But I hope that this inspires you to at least be more observant and be more aware of the time that you are spending and the effort that you are putting in in these different areas of your lives as well. So I hope that you enjoyed this podcast. I really quite enjoyed listing down all these numbers that I've been tracking. And I hope that this inspires you to, you know, maybe be more proactive in improving your life as well. I hope you enjoyed this podcast and I cannot wait to share more with you in our next episode. Goodbye!